Good morning, and I would like to welcome you to this June 6, 2018 meeting of the Planning and Advisory Commission. If you'll please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and I would like to, um, before we get started, just remind those in the audience and, of course, those of us up here, if you have your cell phones with you, please silence them or turn them off. Um, I would also like to remind those in the audience and those watching on television that this is the first hearing of any rezoning, text change, or special, special exception requests brought before us today. We will first hear a reading of the staff report for the case by the planning staff, and we will ask the applicant to provide a brief overview of the request. We will then give the opportunity for anyone in the audience to speak for or against that request or to inquire about the request. The commissioners will have any needed discussion on the case, and once a motion is made and seconded by the commission, a vote will take place and a recommendation will be rendered. The case will go back to the planning department for their independent recommendation. If a favorable recommendation is given, then the case is forwarded to the city council with two independent recommendations. If the planning department makes a recommendation for denial, the applicant will have 10 days from the receipt of a letter stating the denial and to notify the clerk of council that they are requesting to be placed on the city council's agenda. The city council of Columbus will hold a public meeting called the first reading. The said council shall consider the case, review PAC and planning department recommendations, and hear discussion on the matter. The council will make a final decision at a second public meeting called the second reading. Um, commissioners, we were given the minutes earlier um, in the week. I believe you've had an, um, a, an opportunity to review those. Does anybody have any changes or recommendations? Because if not, we can accept them as submitted. I see none. Okay, we will accept those as submitted, Mr. Renfro. So that will bring us to our first and actually only case today, and this is um, a special exception. It is a request to rezone 0.43 acres of land located at 2305 Amos Street. The current zoning is RMF1, which is Residential Multifamily 1. The proposed use is a personal care home type 2. A personal care home type 2 requires a special exception. Greg Johnson is the applicant, and this property is located in Council District 3, Huff. Mr. Renfro, staff report. Yes, ma'am. Um, Greg Johnson has submitted an application for special exception. You cited above. The uh, property is located in an RMF1 zoning district. The site, the site for the proposed personal care home type 2 is located at 2305 Amos Street. Access is or will the type of street providing access to the use be adequate to serve the proposed special use? Amish, Amos Street will provide adequate access for a personal care home type 2, this section of Amos Street is a two-lane local road. Traffic and pedestrian safety is or will access into and out of the property be adequate to provide for traffic and pedestrian safety, the anticipated volume of, the tra of traffic flow, and access by emergency ve vehicles. Access into and out of the property in question will provide for adequate traffic and pedestrian safety. Emergency vehicles will have adequate access to the principal structure and ac accessory uses. Adequacy of public facilities are or will public facilities such as school water or sewer utilities police and fire protection be adequate to serve the special exception use services such as water sewage utilities police and fire protection will be adequate and serve the proposed use at this location protection from adverse effects are or will refuge service parking and loading areas of the property be located or screened to protect other properties in the area such from such adverse effects as noise light glare or odor the property is surrounded by other rmf1 uses parking service and refuge should be adequate and provide as stated within the udo noise light glare and odor should be limited due to the nature of the location the only concern will be the intensity of density with the predominantly single family residential residential like setting 
hours of operation. Will the hours and manner of operation of special exception use have no adverse effects on other properties in the area? The hours of operation for this use will not have an adverse impact on the neighboring properties of this area. Compatibility. Will the height, size, or location of the buildings or other structures on the property be compatible with the height, size, character, or location buildings or other structures on the neighboring properties? This structure's height, size, and location should match the use found in other RMF properties. The location is surrounded by single-family uses. The council district is three huff. 60 property owners within 300 feet of the property have been notified by mail proposed special exception use the planning department has received one comment um, supporting or excuse me opposing this request um, additional information um, this pro piece of property is currently being used as a type one and this is to bring this request is to bring it into compliance commissioners are there any questions regarding the staff report mr dudley on the one comment in opposition, what were the reasons? They were concerned about property values and the amount of cars that may or may not be there. But yet it's already being used. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Any, yes. Uh, yes. You, you, your last question, I, or your last point I missed, you said something, you're doing something to bring it into compliance? It, mm -hmm. it's, it's already in existence. The, it's already in operation, but it's one of those that's not in compliance. So, you know. Okay. So if you will, uh, well, let me make sure there's no other questions. Commissioners, any other questions regarding the staff report? Okay. If you will state your name and address and just give us a brief overview. Good morning. My name is Greg Johnson. I'm with the Finley Firm located at 213th Street here in Columbus, Georgia. Our client is Kenneth B. Walker home, uh, Residential Homes, also known as KBW. The owner and operator of KBW is actually Mr. Timothy Crumbly, who, who is seated here behind me. Um, KBW was started in 2003 as a nonprofit organization. It provides residential housing for young males ages 8 to 21 years old. These males have been subject to physical abuse, mental abuse, neglect, or have been incarcerated with the juvenile justice system with the state of Georgia. Um, my client, in addition to providing residential housing for these young men, he also provides tutoring, um, uh, drug treatment, uh, job training, and other life skills such as that. He houses currently 38 people across five different facilities across the city. He's currently working on building a sixth facility. And the way that he funds this is through the state of Georgia. He makes an application to the Department of Human Resources. Uh, the DHR sends down a representative to um, uh, evaluate the facility and determine whether or not it meets all uh, requirements to actually give funding on really a per bed basis. And uh, once they certify that funding, he's able to receive the funding and house the, uh, the young men. Um, one of the facilities that he uses is located at 2305 Amos Street. It is currently zoned as RMF1 per, with the uh, approved use as a personal care home type one. Um, unfortunately, my client was under the mistaken belief that it was zoned where he could use it as a personal care home type two. He's actually been operating, operating it as a personal care home type two since 2015. Whenever he uh, discovered that it was a personal care home type one uh, use only, he contacted my firm and we began the proceedings that led us here today. Um, currently, there are actually 10 uh, young men that live in the home. Under type one, it could only be six. Um, so really what we're asking the council here to do today is to approve them to be able to use it as it's already being used and just bring it into compliance. Um, uh, I, I believe my client does a huge uh, service to the community. He takes in these young men. He makes sure that they're productive members of society and that they can't actually be on the streets, homeless, or creating um, any other kind of trouble in the community. Um, uh, we would just ask that this board uh, uh, vote to, for him to be able to use it as a personal care home type too. And as far as the uh, comment goes is uh, parking, I don't believe that many of the young men actually have vehicles. Um, so I don't think that that should really be a concern uh, for this panel here today. So the biggest difference, Mr. Renfro, and this is really just the number of residents or patients. Correct. It isn't actually the type of business, it's the number that they can have. Right, the type one goes up to six right. and type two goes up to 18. Okay. 
And for each and for each individual that's added to the home, the state of Georgia actually has to come home, evaluate, come down Ten. and evaluate the home to make sure that there's not too many individuals in there. Otherwise, mm -hmm. my client can't get funding to house them. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, are there any questions for the applicant? Yes, quick question. Um, thank you. How long have you guys been operating um, under the top two status? I, I know you're not legally since 2015. Um, personal uh, care type two, but how long have they been operating at that status? Um, they have. They've been operating in this home since 2005. They didn't have more than. They had more than six people starting in 2015. Mm -hmm. Okay, so over three years. Yes. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Mr. Bollinger, um, we're going to have to hit your green button. I think um, maybe not. There we go. Um, so how many people are in the home total, not counting? I mean, counting the, the kids that are there, I assume there's uh, adult staff there on site as well? Uh, only, the, only the kids actually live in the home, um, I believe, Mr. Crumpley. Yeah, only the kids live in the home. There are currently 10 young men in the home. If he's not allowed to operate under Type 2, three of those um, young men would actually have to leave. Um, and depending on whether or not the state of Georgia can find somewhere else for them to live, they might actually end up homeless if he doesn't get this. Uh, well, I would imagine you have more than, I mean, you, there's got to be overnight caregivers and whatnot, I would assume, in there. So um, he's holding up two fingers. Yeah, you can't two. just have kids living in that house without... Yeah. And, and that was that was my question. So you do there is adult supervision at some point. Okay. Yeah, there, there there is still adult supervision. Okay. Any other questions, commissioners? Um, One if quick the, question. Yes. Can we have the gentleman come forward, yes. please? You say he's the property owner. Yes, he he's actually the owner and operator of ABW Homes. Okay. So if you, I'll need for you to state your name and address, please. Uh, Tim Crumley, uh, 41 Pin Oak Way, Hamilton, Georgia. Thank you. Mr. Reese? Out of the three years that you've been operating under the, uh, the personal care home type 2 status, have you had any issues in the community with the neighbors or any problems with any of your residents there? Not the since the beginning when I first opened. And we had a meeting at a church, and it was uh, resolved during that time. They thought I was going to bring in prisoners and stuff like that, and I had to explain to them that it wasn't prisoners, just kids. And one of the reasons he explained to you that type one is started with six, they gave me seven at the beginning, not six. That's why I was operating under type two. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Commissioner? Yes. Mr. Day. Uh, that area is a high crime area. I mean, how, how would that affect more people coming in that area. That area is real, a lot of crime in that area, I think. Just a few houses from where that home is, a couple of people have been killed True. in their homes there. True. Uh, yes, sir. Um, it was an even higher crime area when I first started, but since then it's been cleaned up a whole lot. Um, there used to be prostitution, drugs, um, trap houses, um, all sorts of things going on at the beginning, but we don't, we don't let our kids roam. They don't even go to the store by themselves. Uh, we have to uh, escort them everywhere they go. Uh, so they won't get in trouble, or they won't, or someone won't come towards them and get them in trouble. Um, a lot of the kids, we, we represent 157 counties in the state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a new environment for a lot of the kids, and it's a new environment for some of the employees also. So we have to stay to ourselves, by ourselves, and uh, for ourselves. Well, really what I'm getting at is how, how, how close are you to police protection, you know, police officers being on duty or because of the fact that this area is real we high in crime. We don't have any problems with police uh, coming to that area, uh, getting in and getting out. Uh, I used to police myself, so I know that area before I even bought the house. So uh, it's not a factor. Well, the reason I'm talking because I lived in that area. I know what the situation is. Yeah, but that was uh, maybe years ago. Yeah. Uh, so. 
Any any other questions, commissioners, for the applicant, Mr. Reese? And just for clarity for me, uh, um, for the staff here, there was no concern at all with the request that's being made today? No, sir. Okay. Any other questions? Do I hear? Oh, well, we have no one in the audience other than the applicant and his legal counsel, so I imagine there's no one here in opposition of it. And I'm sure that you're probably speaking in favor of it. Typically, I ask for anyone to come forward who's in opposition or in favor. I'm not going to do that today since we have no one in the audience. Do I hear a motion? Mr. Reese? Oh, Mr. Greenblatt, I'm sorry. Yes, in regards to special exception EHCP 0418-0865, Mr. Greg Johnson is the applicant located at 2305 Amy Street, approximately 0.43 acres. Request the rezoning from RMF 1 to a special exception for personal care type 2. I move we approve. Do I have a second? Second. All right. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous, so we will send that on with a recommendation for approval. And thank you for coming today. Right, thank you. Um, we have no other cases, and I see the word none beside any new business, so I'm assuming we have no announcements to make or? That's right. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Well, then we are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>